Nairobi, one of Africa's largest and most interesting cities. Unique in that it boasts as the only capital city bordered by a national park. A city that never seems to sleep. A city thriving with a people with boundless energy and is a place of great contrasts where race, tribe and origin all become facets of a unique Nairobi character. It is in this city that computer specialist Douglas Sadiallo, secretary Grace Kuna, and integrity officer Julio Goye call home. The city is also home to Mukuru Kwanjenga primary school students. This is home to this small group of unsung heroes, the city's peace ambassadors. I do consider myself a peace ambassador, or maybe strongly a peace builder. My name is Helena. I'm a peace builder from class 7. We should all be peacemakers. But what one thing links all these people together? They are all survivors of a tragedy. While 14-year-old Anita was too young to remember the event that would later influence the inception of the club that she's proudly a member, the Peace Builders Club. For when we have peace, our plans to work are fine. Douglas, Julie, Grace were ordinary Kenyans going through their ordinary routine until that fateful Friday morning when their destinies became locked together forever. Friday, August 7th, 1998 was just another morning in the city. The traffic snarlaps, the matatus dropping off and calling out for passengers. Hawkers selling their wares. City dwellers rushing off to their various destinations. Just another day in the city. But that was all about to change, tragically. The calm was shattered at approximately 10.35 a.m. when a huge explosion rocked the city. Suicide bombers had exploded 700 kilos of TNT in a truck outside the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi. At the same time, Another explosion rocked the U.S. Embassy in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. A little-known terrorist network named Al-Qaeda organized the attacks led by Saudi dissident Osama bin Laden. The bomb blast ended the lives of 218 people, injured thousands, 400 people were severely disabled, and 38 people became totally blind. One of those who lost their sight was computer technician Douglas Sidiello. When I became conscious, I had people wailing, crying, and my face was bandaged all over. So I could not see. So what came to my mind was that when the bandages are removed from my face, I would be able to see. But it never occurred to me that I would never see again. I lost sight. Others were left with only partial sight caused by the millions of shards of glass that flew from the embassy and surrounding buildings. Grace Kuna, who at the time was working at the cooperative bank house, 11th floor, remembers it all too well. I was still on my computer and the printer jumped and hit me on my right eye. My right eye was hit, the ball was almost coming out and uh, I remember trying to hold that eye with my, my right hand. That's why I sustained all these cuts. Julio Goya was at work in her office when the truck bomb exploded. Shards of glass and sharp chunks of concrete from the explosion tore into her face, but the effects of the blast cut even deeper. And I still only had three months to live, but the toxics are too much in my body. So I was like walking towards my grave for the first two or so years. Rosemary, then two years old, was in a public bus with her mother Muloni. Karudichini. 
sasa watu wengi wakakufa all like rosemary were innocent victims of terrorism precious lives destroyed by a single act of violence their stories like those of all the victims revealing how the loss of a single life can leave behind ripples that can shatter the existence of entire families my family income was so, so much affected because uh, um, i'm not able to um, uh, give as much as i would have wished to when i had said Meanwhile, in the months following the bombing, a challenge arose. Many individuals immediately recognized the need to preserve the memory of this tragedy, its victims and its consequences. A memorial garden to honor those who perished in the tragedy was planned on the site where the embassy building stood. A trust team consisting of various trustees was appointed to spearhead the project. All the trustees um volunteer their time to, 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 to make the right decisions, to, to take the path forward, to keep it on the right track, and um, most importantly, to raise money to ensure that it, it continues. The trustees were charged with turning the site into a memorial park, not only as a tribute to the victims, but also a place where the public could be educated about the futility of violence and the essence of peace. It's an excellent place for us to Remember that in the midst of all the turmoil and violence going on in the world, we as Kenyans owe it to ourselves to uh, reflect on peace and to work towards way, ways in which we can all live together as brothers and sisters. The construction of the park was made possible by donations in cash and kind by a number of individuals, companies and organizations leading to its opening on the 7th of August, 2001. The central feature of the park is the wall that commemorates the 218 people who died, with each name inscribed on a granite slab. A sculpture made from the debris of the blast dominates one side of the park, striking and poignant at the same time. And a fountain made in the famous Ying Yang sign bubbles in the center of the park and is a symbol of life. A visitor center stands at the site of Ufundi House, a building that used to stand next to the embassy and which took the full force of the blast. The Peace Memorial Museum was created and designed within the visitor center to honor those who lost their lives during the tragic event. It was also developed to tell the stories of those who survived and for those whose lives were changed forever. The images and exhibits on display are meant to educate the public on the appalling consequences of terrorism and sensitize visitors on the need for peace tolerance and reconciliation. For the survivors of the blast, the days, weeks, months and years to follow were quite trying. However, they made a conscious decision to turn this tragic event as a launching their quest to spread peace and transform the lives of others affected by tragedies. The three became part of Visual 7th August, a group of like-minded survivors on a mission to bring change and spread the peace message. Douglas picked up the pieces and is moving on with life while endeavoring to serve as an inspiration to many around the world. Sidialo is now an avid cyclist, mountain climber and motivational speaker. He is believed to be the first blind African to reach the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. In 2007, he cycled the length of Africa through 10 countries on the Tour d'Afrique from Cairo to Cape Town, successfully completing the 12,000 kilometers in 95 days. And becoming the first blind person and the first African to achieve this feat. Douglas is also working to inspire persons with special needs to engage in sporting activities 
and to discover their unique qualities. During the 2008 Summer Paralympics Games in Beijing, Douglas carried the torch and went on to lead his team of 13 athletes to bag 5 gold, 3 silver and a bronze medal. For this, Douglas received recognition from the Kenyan government for his historic accomplishment and was crowned with state honours as a national hero by the Kenyan president. For Grace Kuna, the bomb blast had left her face and upper body severely scarred, but her belief in forgiveness as the key to personal peace has kept her going on. I have uh, tried to forgive them, but I have not forgotten. I have not, I have not. Drawing strength from her experience, Grace has traversed the country, spreading the message of hope and courage to victims of similar tragedies. Her journey as a bomb survivor gave her the courage to travel to Mombasa following the twin attacks on an Israeli-owned beach resort and an Israeli charter jet liner on the Kenyan coastal city in 2002. For Grace, the attack that killed at least 15 people, including the three suicide bombers, rekindled memories of the embassy bombing just four years earlier. Through her experience, Grace was a beacon of hope to the survivors of this tragedy. And uh, one of the ladies was so burnt, she was so down. But when I talked to her, I showed her my hand. And my hand was not even uh, working, it was uh, totally damaged. And uh, I gave her hope. And after talking to her, she started smiling. And uh, after that, I followed and I found that she a little taken it. By sharing her story, Grace is able to help others see beyond the physical scars. In addition, Kuna, who had been an orphan herself, cares for foster children belonging to her deceased sister and has seen her children grow and is now a proud grandmother to two girls. More than a decade after the bombing, Julie is highly resilient. Like the other two survivors, she is warm, friendly and with a vibrant spirit. Now working as an integrity officer with the Kenya Teachers Service Commission, Julie accepted the loss of one eye with grace and has used her experience and training thereafter to fight corruption and teach values to students both at a primary and secondary school level. I focused more on the youth because I was thinking that if our people were not corrupt, if someone was not corrupted, all those components that were used for bombing would not have been allowed into the country. And it's because of just some, somebody who took some little money somewhere that all this happened. One of Julie's goals was to move beyond the tragedy and explore how she could use her experience to help others in similar situations. In 2000, Kenya witnessed the worst aviation accident in its history, with the national airline Kenya Airways Flight 431 crashed shortly after takeoff from Abidjan. 169 people perished. Julie and Grace were at hand to lend support and counsel and console the family members of the victims in the days and months that followed. The three survivors have been involved in philanthropic activities such as educating children of the bomb blast victims. Through this initiative, Rosemary Modoni can now afford a smile despite the many physical and emotional scars she carries to date.